is an ideal model we want to pattern our lives after. A lot of people, young people come to me and they say, I want you to mentor me. What you're saying is, you want me to extract my life before you and you want to pattern your life after the principles that guide my life. So a true father must be a mentor. You must be able to show your son how to live. And then a mentor is always ahead of the mentee. That means in moral standard, in uprightness, in purity, in holiness, in the fear of God, in dedication to responsibilities, you are above your child. If you are not doing that, you are falling short of God's expectation. Then a coach, a coach is that person that identifies the weakness and the strength of the one that is being trained and then nurtures you based on that understanding. That is why I'm not a great fan of football, but I know the football coaches, they know that the people um, playing the right or the left wing or the center or the defense, they tell them how to position themselves. When they were playing the Chelsea, I don't know what it means. My husband was telling me, so if I say it wrong, it's what I was told. He said all their defendants were bent. So they were all in the house. Is that true? Up blue. <laughs> they were all in the house. Because their defendants were bent. So when the other party scored, they all now went out to attack. The coach is the one telling them how to do so. He knew their strength. He knew their weakness. Sometimes when they give one a red card, and maybe they give the, ref, I mean, the, the keeper a red card, then they will get a good player who also can keep to go and do so. Because the coach knows their strength and their weakness. A father, parents should know the strength and the weakness of their children. One of the reasons we have favorites is because we do not learn to appreciate the strength and the weakness of our children. All our children cannot be the same. Can I hear amen? It's a sin to have favorites among your children. They deserve your undivided, unconditional love and attention. Whether they are boys or they are girls. Whether they are firstborn or they are lastborn. Whether they are only child or amongst 15 children. Very important. So what are the things a father should be? Number one, a mentor. Who is a mentor? A model. Number two, a coach. So as parents, go and learn the weaknesses and the strengths of your children. They have strength and weakness. Some are thoughtful, some are not thoughtful. Some are naturally what we want. Some we need to work on them to be what we want. But you must love your children equally. So you must be a mentor, you must be a coach. The third thing you must be, parents, you must be a teacher. Somebody say teacher. Who is a teacher? A teacher researches knowledge and imparts us with a hope that someday we'll be greater than him. My mother was a teacher. And she told me that a good teacher, the desire of a good teacher is that all her pupils will be greater than her. And so when we go out, she was headmistress for like 20 something years. When we go out and some people greet her, ah, mommy, why? she takes pride and delight in them. And if they now happen to be in high positions, you know, big cars and all that, she feels so proud. That's, oh yes! Okay, in St. Michael's Primary 6D. Oh! They don't give her money. But she, there's so much joy in her heart that her, children, that her pupils have become greater than her. And then what do they do? They open the door for her, they tell her to come in, that's all. That's the glory of parents. We research, we find out, and then we put that knowledge in our children with the hope that one day they will be greater than us. All your children shall be greater than you. Yeah. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. The heralds and the Pharaoh that go to snatch people from their infancy will not catch your children. In the name of Jesus. And I said, finally, a father. A father is an embodiment of all these and more. What does a father do? He waits until we become our hidden dream. Until we overcome our greatest fear. Until we take over the button 
a mantle of leadership from him. A father is not satisfied until he is sure that there is a legacy being left. That's why the Bible says children are the heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. We are God's inheritance. And that's what a father wants to be. Let's read the book of Proverbs chapter 17 verse 6. If you're there, say amen. amen. Children's children are a crown to the aged. And parents are the pride of their children. It's so, so important. You're the crown. You're the, you're the ornament. You're the decoration. The children are the decoration. Of the parents. So it's so important to nurture them until they, until they become that. Is it glory? Is the same word kabod, which means weight. So what he's saying is, if there are no fathers to raise the son until they become that stage, the children become featherweights. May your children not be featherweights. What should they be? Heavyweights. Heavyweights. May the Lord help us. In the world today, there's a lot of chaos. Children have been abandoned. Many fathers, many husbands have abdicated their responsibilities because they are suffering a temporary setback. Let me tell you this, it is beautiful for a man to dazzle his wife. I love it. And I say this to all men listening to me. Dazzle your wife. Tantalize your wife. What does it mean? The Bible says for this reason a man will leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. That word cleave means to keep chasing. You have to keep doing what? Chasing your wife. I've told you before that a marriage is like an old car. The older it grows, the more attention it requires. But that is the way a marriage is. As a marriage grows older, it requires what? More attention. That's the time we take our spouses for granted. And assume that we know them. We must take our marriage at heart. And do everything to make it work. Don't put auto crews and tell them to be delivering. When you yourself, you're not, your mind is not in it. You can tell them to remind you. I said no marriage drives on auto crews. So today, every husband listening to me, go back and retoast your wife. Can I hear amen? amen? You will be delighted and greatly inspired to talk into the books written by Takuma and Fumi Johnson. Get the best-selling The Secret Black Book of Wealth by Fumi Johnson and start a journey into economic success. Must I Submit is another great book from Fumi Johnson with great insight into the man and wife question. And from Takumba Johnson comes the classic Life Out of the Box. Also available as an audiobook. This telecast has been brought to you through the support of Chain TV Partners. For partnership, counseling and further inquiries, contact us at Chain TV, the Capstone Church with our rules. 360 Motala Mohammed Way, Yaba, Lagos. You can call us on telephone numbers 0802-318-2030 or 01-893-8243 or you can send an email to capstone underscore c at yahoo.com or helpdesk at the capstone online.com. You can also visit our website at www.thecapstoneonline.com. Thank you for watching. Capstone,